gotta get this cash. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this cash. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this cash. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this money. I gotta get this cash. I gotta get this money. truck buddies airborne trucker checking in from uh, dalton georgia so uh huh. yeah we could have parked here last night there's a gate here at the front but the guy that's on loan is like yeah man you guys could have parked here last night man uh but no, tmc didn't ask us about the parking situation or we would have told me i could have parked here so it's like six trucks here now uh it's at least four more on the way because one guy parked up and then there's another guy getting unloaded and I pulled up so that's three and then like we all trickled in here at about the same time so it should be I think four more trucks like a total of ten probably more than that but if we ever come back to this area the guy was cool man like I said he's like they, they was, you know, they're wanting to work so um, I have no idea I meant to ask them what they were gonna build up here but, uh, they need I guess they need a whole bunch of crane mats We're all waiting, and it's a good chance the majority of us might go to, to the same place to pick up. It just it just depends. So it is what it is, man. Like I say, sometimes you can roll the dice, um, but I want 100% sure. If you're not 100% sure, it's no big deal. Just stop, man. You make a note of it, and you'll know for next time. Like I said, it's no big deal to me. I stopped uh, uh, 40 miles short or something like that. So it's all good, man, to see these guys work, and it's... Glad to have us. So now we wait, man. This this is the fun part, man. This is the fun part. But I got a feeling. Well, I guess I got a feeling. I should be dispatched fairly quickly. I just got to get back moving west. All right. And I'm pretty sure there's multiple options. Um, hell, I might even go back to Tennessee to pick up since I'm so close. But hell, I might go to Atlanta, uh, Chattanooga, uh, heck, anywhere, man. I'm, I'm not can't you know rule anything out here where we're sitting at all right so i got lucky i only waited like about an hour to get dispatched and i had two options uh, both interesting now one was for cartersville um and then another one was for villa rica two drop going to kansas now only reason I didn't take the Cartersville because they didn't load the appointment until four o'clock. There's like a 50 50 chance I wasn't gonna get loaded before that appointment time. So I rolled the dice and I came down to Villa Rica, down here to Southwire. Now, they are horrendous for load times. This time, I got lucky. Uh, it was one TMC truck, he's already loaded. I pulled up, and then two other CRST trucks pulled up. I'm in the bay right now. I would have been loaded already, but uh, they had a safety meeting. And this is the first time I'll probably be here less than two hours. I'm surprised. So I've already got my plan set up. All right. Now, both these drops um, is for Friday. Now, the thing is, tomorrow's Thursday. I've got a 570-mile ride to my first drop. I've got eight hours left on my clock. So we'll call that 400 miles. I have to get to at least 
uh, Kentucky. I put down uh, Padu a Paducah. Uh, that's, I don't know how to pronounce, but I call it Paducah uh, for 390 miles. And if I push it, uh, if I can get to Marion, Illinois, that's 436 miles. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get there. So I, I wrote down some other spots to stop. Uh, most likely I'll make it to, um, I hope to get make it to the rest area or uh, rest haven on I-24. That, and that's still in Kentucky. That's 350 miles. So if I can knock out 350 miles, that'll leave me with two, 220, so four hours. That might not work. Because I, I got to be there if I want to get that first one off by 12 o'clock. I got to drive most of my time out. But it all depends on when I stop. So I'll be getting there kind of close. If I stop at 9, I start at 7, I have a four-hour ride that'll put me there at 11. I like, like no kidding, I have to you know get off my butt and get there before 12 o'clock. It's first come, first serve. Now, the reason I want to get this first one delivered is because my second drop is 255 miles from the first one. And they're from 5 to 12 also. That gives me another four-hour ride. So... As long as I can get this first one off tomorrow, I'll be good for Friday to get get that one off. And I read the reviews for that second drop. They said, if you don't get there by 12 o'clock, <laughs> you ain't getting unloaded. And we already know it's going to be Friday. So um, if I can get to that first one, get that dropped off, and then I can park at the second one. They said they have overnight parking. I'll be good to go. I've already got my fuel place uh, planned out. that was easier than I thought now I don't you can't look at the size of the reels you gotta look at the weight all right so this one is like 600 pounds I took two straps on there as you can see straps 5400 pounds that's more than enough securement same thing with this one but it's two of them so 600 pounds that's 1200 pounds for two reels I said that's 10,000 pounds of securement on those two you got three of these uh cost 700 pounds got three of those 2100 pounds there same thing 600 pounds that's 1200 you know it's more than enough securement on these i thought i was going to use chains like you never know until you get loaded uh what you're working with so all my wooden reels that's my first drop now, if I can get those off tomorrow, that'll set me up perfectly to get off that second drop, which are the, the three big ones. That, that's all I got right there. So um, I'm blessed and fortunate just to have uh, a quick load here. I mean, because usually it's it's always something going on here, but uh, I'm, I'm appreciative for it. So got the straps trying to you know pull it to the middle when you can. Got to make sure you watch out the bottom. And make sure it doesn't pull it too far forward or too far to the back. Uh, this one here is a little one it's like 100 pounds like literally 100 pounds so like i said it's more than enough securement on all these reels i walk back up to the front to get my paperwork now usually you park up here and you secure because they got the poles up in the front but we got tmc drivers taking their two hour break uh right there in the way so i just came back here and uh secured everything make my video out the way i've already got my two hour break in I get on down the road, you know, be considerate of others, man. If you're scared to back up or something, I mean, just ask for help. But you're kind of screwing the next driver that's getting, un I'm getting loaded, that needs to be in that area, but whatever. But, so that's what that looks like. Nice and easy, nothing too crazy. Like I said, get this first one off, well, you know, that's everything's gonna fall into place once I get that first one off. Now the only problem is I'm gonna run into Nashville uh, it's gonna be mad traffic. I already know. Going through Chattanooga and uh, uh, Nashville, so 
I just gotta get on the other side of Nashville and hopefully get a better idea of where I'm gonna stop. Uh, as long as I set myself up to deliver this first one, no matter how many miles I have to do tomorrow, as long as I'm there by 12 o'clock tomorrow, I'll be good. You know, I can get that one off and then drive, finish that one off and park up there at that, at that second drop. So that's the plan. So we'll see how that works out 24 hours from now. All right. All right, truck buddies. We're gonna go get our paperwork, get on the road and uh, head on to uh, Missouri. All right, so things are pretty much going like I was hoping for it would. All right, so I got to my first stop or my first place that I trip plan for. I got parking, go ahead and shut it down. Now, I get my time back around about 6.30. As you can see, I still got about a four hour ride. I should get there around no later than 11, hopefully. Get there around 11, get unloaded. As long as I get unloaded tomorrow on my first drop, um, I'll be fine for, for Friday delivery with my second, my second, my second uh, stop off. All right, so that's the only way that's going to work. Even though they scheduled both deliveries for the same day, which would have been impossible to do because of the early receiving hours. All right, one is from 5 to 12, other one is 6 to 12. So I've got to get this first one off, you know, by 12. And then, like I said, I just leave and I'll go park up at the second one and be ready to go for Friday morning. And then head on into Brownsburg or towards Brownsburg or something like that. So... Not too bad, not too shabby. Now I filled up, already filled up with fuel. All I gotta do is get up, and brush my mouth, get on the road, and get this, you know, make this first delivery. And now uh, we'll make it do what it do. All right, truck buddies, we'll see you in the morning. Now this is why I always walk around my truck after I park for the night. Now this old damn Peterbilt next to me, he's blocking the aisle so you can drive down and park. So you got all these trucks here, uh, got to drive in front and, and back into these spots, which ain't necessary. All he has to do is pull up, uh, shoot, probably about three feet, three, four feet. You know, you screw your buddy. Now, TMC knocked on his door and he ain't answered, which is, is kind of messed up. Like I said, I mean, you just, you know, just inconsiderate, man. I tell you, that's what I hate, I hate, I hate thieves and incon inconsiderate people, man. And hate is a strong word, but I just, I just, I don't get it, man. As soon as I stopped, I was like, man, he's in the doggone way. Blocking the entire aisle. So now, all these, like I said, now all these other drivers have to damn negotiate around this knucklehead. I tell you, man, inconsiderate drivers, man. Freaking inconsiderate. So I guess they'll get in eventually. But yeah, I walked around my truck twice. I made sure I was in my lines. And I made sure you no know, drivers can get past me. But uh, more than likely, if TMC was smart, he'd just back up and just park next to me. That's all I did. I wasn't going to be bothered. Because the guy, he just laid down. So, but whatever. Yeah. Team at 17. <laughs> Damn. Ago. You told me that you got me when your check came home I've been waiting patiently cause you my homie bro But times is getting hard so I'ma need to see that cheddar though You ain't been picking up, you finding escapes I might have to wipe you out just like you Colgate You have been ducking at the crib thinking that you safe But little do you know I'm posted right Alright, that wasn't bad It's 11.30 I got here around about 10.30 got about, Took about an hour to get unloaded Uh, You can see they do have parking so, we'll know that for next time. Whole bunch of parking. Nah, it wouldn't have mattered no way because I ain't have enough time to get here, but for the future, I'll know. See, 
next stop, 256 miles. So I'll call that a five hour ride. Put me there at 4.30, give or take, stop, grab a shower. They've got parking. I'll be ready to go for in the morning, man. You can't beat that. So we're gonna figure out where we're gonna go next. Like I said, this is not too bad. Like I said, they have parking here and they got parking at the next drop. So all I gotta do is find me a shower and go from there. I just said that. All right, here we go. All right, so we made it. We're good to go for in the morning. Now I had the slightest idea where to park it, so I just tried to park my best out of the way. But five to 12, man, I gotta go to that door right there. Go there, five o'clock, and uh, then wait. But uh, it's not gonna take long, I got three pieces. So get unloaded, I guess, pull off somewhere out the way, and um, wait on the dispatch. Wait on the dispatch. So today was a good day. Got unloaded, the first stop, you know, got there right on time. Had time stop, got a shower. Had uh, about 70 miles left to get here. Got her before it got dark. And we're good to go, man. So we're gonna see where we're gonna head next uh, for Monday delivery. It's gonna be kind of interesting. So I gotta grab something to head east. See you in the morning. Top of the morning truck, buddies. Hey, 5.30, man. Hey, 5 o'clock. Hey, them lights came on. I think the lights came on like about 10 till. Hey, check in 5 o'clock. Bam. Loaded less than 30 minutes, man. I mean, that's like a heck of a job to have. Well, I don't know if, well, got here kind of late, so, but they're receiving hours, you know, from 5 to 12. So I wonder if they actually get off at 12 o'clock. So that's seven hours. I mean, it's possible. You know, who knows, but. I've got at least about three hours till I get dispatched, so I'm going to lay back down. Um, I guess there's a uh, place that, you know, they that trucks deliver close. This whole street is lined up with trucks, man, the whole entire street. And, of course, it says no parking, but I'm pretty sure um, it's the norm. But uh, it's fairly clean, and, and that's the biggest thing, man. When you make parking spots or, if, you know, you park somewhere, hey, keep it clean, man, because that's how things can change on you real quick you know if you know you're messy and slob and just leave trash and just just be inconsiderate man that's why i know we can't park at a lot of places man because uh steering wheel holders leave their trash pee bottles dump bags uh trash on the side of the road and shippers receivers and just you know companies are tired of it and I, I don't blame them man you know you always you know you got you no know, drivers complaining about you know not being able to go to bucky's and park at bucky's you, know, you see the truck stops. You smell those truck stops. I don't want that crap in my business either. Let alone Bucky's. You can spend without even getting a feel. It's easy. I remember the first few times I used to go in there. That's a hundred dollar bill. It's almost like Walmart. You can't go into Walmart, especially like just shopping randomly, you know, and not spend a hundred dollars. And that's how Bucky's is. So sad to say, they don't need our business, or they don't need the, the semi truck business because it's just that's not their business model. It's for travelers, it's for folks that are just going to get fuel up, they want to get, you know, souvenirs, snacks, food, go to the bathroom, and get back on the road. And they turn that, I'm telling you, 
There's the one down in Daytona. Uh, I think it was whatever the last holiday was. Man, there was a line to get in there, you know. So just imagine you got big trucks in the way. That doesn't have dedicated parking, you know. Even if you try to bobtail, you know, just, you know. It is what it is, man. Don't be so freaking disgusting. Don't be just so nasty. That's why you can't park at some Walmarts, let alone some of the city ordinance. Uh, uh, stop it, you know. That's why I just try to now. If I go to Walmart, if I know that you know they've got you know they allow parking or we're just a shop, I get my stuff and leave, man. It's just that simple. I just try to take my chances parking at a way station or a rest area, even though shit. Sometimes you know the rest area is not even safe. If y'all seen that um uh that uh tragedy that happened last weekend at, at that Georgia rest area. You know, I don't know the full story, but um, a few drivers died. You know, truck came piling through the, you know, flying through the rest area. We're not sure if it was a medical emergency or what, but um, drivers lost their lives. Like I said, that's why I was trying to, I mean, if it's your time, it's your time. But I always try to think about, you know, I think outside the box, well, like I said, when it comes to parking, how I make a parking spot, where I'm parking at. You know, you got to think about the other drivers. Like I say, I don't trust my own driving. So I don't trust nobody else's driving. And that that's just... That's just being, you know, 100, you know. But it's Friday. It's early this morning, man. Woo, man. Gotta love it, though, man. Now, my truck buddy that delivered, he was sitting right there next to me. He got loaded before me, okay? Because I got loaded. I think I took off like 1 or 2 o'clock. He was loaded before lunchtime. So, I'm assuming I didn't get a chance to ask him why he didn't deliver yesterday because... It was 800 miles um, to here, almost 800 miles. Now, if you got majority of your clock, if you know you're timing everything right, he should have been able to deliver yesterday. He would have been, he would have been cutting it close. I think he would have been cutting it close. I think he would have probably got here right at um, 11, 30, 12. Uh, if he, you know, if he drove straight, but I, I don't know what his time was. But me personally, I was thinking, I was like, I was doing the math about, you know, how how long it took to get loaded. Uh, the traffic and all that good stuff. I would have tried to deliver yesterday. That's just me. He had just one drop. I had two drops. That's why I had to damn make sure I parked up yesterday or delivery yesterday and parked up last night to make sure I got this delivery off. But everybody runs their truck different. Everybody's clock management is different. Time management is different. So, hey, it is what it is. But that's the only way you're going to be able to make money uh, running e logs, man, and, you know, working for a mega. That's my opinion, you know. You have to deliver early. I talked about that in um, in earlier earlier videos. To make money, you got to turn your loads, man. You get on your load. You know, if you got most of your time, try a trip plan. Like you can't trip plan traffic in in the unknown. But to the best of your abilities, if you know you're gonna be cutting it kind of close, that's when you might skip on a shower. You know, you might skip on you know trying to get something to eat. You try to keep food on a truck because sometimes that hour here, that thirty minutes there, that'll get you on the back end. Like, you no, know, you went from East Coast to Central Standard Time, so you got an hour back. So, but like I said, everybody runs their truck different. Maybe he ended up having enough time, but me personally, I shouldn't have made it here before him, and I had a drop. I had a drop uh, in Missouri, but who knows, man? But um, that's how you make your money. Get your load, turn your load, and get to the next one. So we're going to wait on dispatch. I'll take my boots off and see if I can get lucky. All right, truck buddies, it's Friday. We finally made it, man. This <laughs> this day has definitely been an adventure. So I got unloaded at 5 o'clock this morning. About 7.30, got a message from my fleet manager saying, hey, we got we got one, th one option for you, man. You got to go pick up and make it to, you know, it's, it's a two-drop load. It's okay, cool. So me not thinking, just looking into it. It's okay, I got, you know get you know get to the first place i was about 30 miles away and then the second part you know was uh about four hours away so i'm like damn i'm up there rushing so i get to the first place and i see 33 feet on the paper i'm like 33 feet and the lady's like um i need 33 feet of the trailer um is that gonna be enough uh for your second stop i'm like huh so i looked at my dispatch wrong i had two pickups one delivery no big deal, but we made it work. So the first stop is all this right here. 
that's the first stop. That was the first pickup. So I get to my second part here at Warrington, Missouri. And you gotta check in here, it's uh, SAF Holland. Now, it could be a debacle getting here, or getting in here, but they load you quick. I think I got loaded in like 15 minutes, but I had to wait about two hours because I got here at a bad time. So I've got some bars, or not bars, excuse me, I got angle iron. Now, some wouldn't do this, some would. I did it because just anything can happen in that 15 feet. So, bam, got my four securing. I left, the guy left me just enough space where I can uh, do a bulkhead. Now, got four straps alternating, and I would have did a bulkhead on the back, but I'm like uh, four inches short. I need it to be like right here. I can't put it there. So I got no way to hold the chain. So, I mean, I'm fine. So I got my four securement. But if I could have put a bulkhead back here, I would have did that too. Now, when it's the weekend, you get in a hurry, you're rushing, you're rushing. I'm telling you, man, it's not worth it, man. Take your time. Think about what you're doing. I always say it, dog on every other video. Think about what you're doing. Because that five, 10 minutes you try to save, man, it might, you know, cost you several hours trying to get to the house. All right. So I got four straps on that. Like I said, they're alternated. Got my bulkhead. That's good to go. On these, I guess there's some kind of ramps or something. But two straps on each of these. I alternated straps on those. Any sharp edges or was unsure about it, I put edge protection on it. Uh, it's not heavy, but I'm pretty sure it's going to ride like crap. Or, or it's been riding all right. I'm not sure how it's going to ride with this here on the back. Okay, but yeah, man, heading to the terminal right now. I've got about a, I think it's a five-hour ride to the terminal. I was here long enough to complete my two-hour break. And uh, I'm going to get on down the road. I'm going to get in probably about 9 o'clock. 4.30, About 10 o'clock. 9.30, 10 o'clock, I should get into the terminal if there's no issues, no traffic. It's about 10 o'clock. <clears throat> I'm not going to be able to get the truck washed tonight, so... I'll clean the truck tonight, get in line for the truck wash in the morning, get the truck wash, and then I'll turn my keys in for service uh, for Sunday. So I should have a decent weekend. Should be a decent weekend. I don't have to deliver until Monday in Brazil, Indiana. It's like 30 miles, give or take, from the terminal. Now, I got a 12 o'clock appointment for Monday. It's like they do by appointment only. No big deal. Now, unsure about what I'm going to grab after that. Uh, I think they do, uh, I think TMC might pick up out of there, so... The push kind of shove. If they got something, I'll ask for it. Just to expedite the, the process of me getting a late start Monday. Got my dummy strap on there the best that I could. That's smooth metal, smooth edges, so there's no edge protection on that. Luckily, I was able to the waiting, the staging area is like right across the street. So I was able to down cross the street and come back over and not trip my clock because I'm going to need this BS time, I think, to make it back to the terminal. Yep. So when I got here, my timer was running and it got down to my drive time. So when the guy called me, I still had like 30 more minutes. Luckily, they were still loading the other truck. So I had no time to wait, secure my load and get my time back. Like I said, I shouldn't need it, but I'd rather have it, man. When you're so close to completing your break, just go ahead and do it. Cause anything can happen, you know, going down the road. So I got my two hours of BS time back. Well, it's almost two hours. All right, so 
We're gonna get on down the road. Everything's secure. Uh, if you see me, holler at me. I'll be at Brownsburg, man. Uh, but I'll be in and out. So sometimes I disappear like a fart in the wind. So if you see me, lunch might be on me. All right, so I finally made it. I made it to Brownsburg. It's like I thought, 1030. This place is freaking crowded. So I got some cleaning to do. Just the norm. Pull up the carpets. Just got to look how you get it when they issue it to you. So I'm straighten up this stuff, make it look presentable, get the truck wash in the morning, and then I'm gonna disappear like a fart in the wind. Like I said, if you catch me, catch me if you can, lunch is on me, good luck.